If you're running Google Ads and every single time you spend more money, your ROAS drops, then this video is gonna break down exactly why that happens and be a solution for how you can completely fix this so that every time you spend more money and add budget to your Google account, you're actually gonna know exactly how much you should get in return. If your Google account currently looks like this, where you started at a higher ROAS and every time you spent money, which is the green line in this case, your ROAS has slowly dipped down and down and down, I'm gonna break down why this happens and actually why it might not be the worst thing. Here's the good news. While our return on ad spend may have dipped, our actual purchases have increased drastically. If we just look at this very first week, we spent $1,800, we drove a 4.1 return on ad spend, and our purchases were $7,500. If we look all the way at last week or the last few weeks here, we spent $4,800 and we drove $14,400. We were previously driving $7,500, now we're driving $14,000. Along the way, we doubled our ad spend. So here's how you can understand exactly what your campaign is going to return at once you continue to scale it rather than a situation where you just scale and try to hope for the best and hope that that ROAS continues to increase or continues to maintain the same level while you scale. What you're going to do is go into any of your campaigns. We're just going to use a standard shopping campaign and we're going to go to our insights and click on search terms. In the filter section is you are going to type in search term and you're going to use the contain function and you're going to enter your brand name here. So in this case, I'm going to enter a part of of my brand term. And what I'm gonna notice right away is that there's gonna be a whole lot of terms that show up that actually contain my branded name. Our branded name is a little generic, so it's actually okay that we have a lot of terms. And what I care about the most is how much we have spent on that branded name. We've only spent $32.92 on that branded name. And if we use the does not contain function, we have spent $1,000 on non-branded terms. So what I like to do here for every single campaign in my entire account, I'm gonna go through all the search terms and I'm gonna slowly note down the cost and the value of my branded versus my non-branded terms. I don't care if I have segments where I think there's branded terms. You can't go halfway on this. This is something that you need to fully commit to. You need to go through every single campaign, every single ad group, and you need to lay it out on a spreadsheet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to name our campaign name here, and we're just going to have cost and revenue. And what we're just going to insert for the cost, because this is our first campaign, this is going to be our ML shopping campaign, and the cost is $32.92. So we're just copy and pasting this. We're dropping it into our spreadsheet here, and we're taking the revenue, which is $109.95. So this is going to be our branded, and this is going to be non-branded. We're going to pull the same two metrics, cost and revenue. So again, we're going to take our search term contains, does not contain our branded name. We're going to grab the cost of 1003 and then we're also going to pull in the conversion value, which is our revenue. The next thing we're going to do is do this exact same exercise for every single campaign in our account. Now that we've dropped in all of our metrics for all the active campaigns that are in this account, I just want to break down something that's super important. So on the performance max side, you're actually not able to see the cost associated to brand versus non-brand. You're only able to see the value. As a rule of thumb, you generally want to understand that branded search is going to have a very, very similar ROAS as your performance performance max branded revenue. Here's how I would do this. We're going to put a ROAS column in here and we're going to take the 24,000 divided by the 1800, which is going to give us a 13 return on ad spend. We're then going to apply this 13 ROAS. So we're going to assume a 13 ROAS here, and we're going to assume the cost based on this 5,200 revenue. So a really easy way to do this is you just take your 5,200 revenue divided by 13. That's how much you spent to drive your 5,200 revenue. And then for this remaining side, for the not branded side, we're just going to take how much the campaign has spent in total, which in this case is around 15,500, and we're going to subtract the cost of the brand. And then we're going to add a ROAS number for everything. And how we get that same ROAS number is we're taking revenue divided by cost, which is getting us ROAS here, getting us ROAS here, ROAS, 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 ROAS. Cool. We can see that our shopping campaign and our performance max campaign are the main drivers for non-branded spend. And they're also the main drivers for non-branded revenue. You could also see our non-brand search campaign is leaning heavily to non-brand. These are all good signs. We generally want this to be the split. And we want branded search, of course, to heavily favor our branded terms, which in this case, it perfectly is. The big concern comes if you have a campaign that has say a 50-50 split between branded and non-branded. Keep in mind, step one here was just get your data out. And now instead of using this exact data, I wanna show you an over 
super exaggerated example because I think it's gonna apply to most businesses, especially if you're on the smaller side or you're not 100% experienced with Google Ads because this is gonna be a big difference maker for you. So we're gonna create an example shopping campaign. And in this case, we're gonna assume that it's a 50-50 split. And we're just gonna safely assume that we're spending a total of $20,000 for the month. So in that case, if we split the cost of $20,000 right down the middle, and we spent $10,000 on branded search, and we spent $10,000 on non-branded search. And keep in mind, it doesn't matter if this is $100 and $100, it's just the fact that we're breaking these out evenly. If our branded search returns at a 10, which as we saw here, this example of branded search returned at a 13. It's not unusual for branded search to perform super, super high. So if this branded search returns at a 10, and if we take our non-branded average here, which is really not actually 2.82, but it's close to 2.82, and we just said three. Rough assumption that someone who types in your brand converts at a 10X return on ad spend, and someone who converts on a non-brand converts at a 3X return on ad spend. What that basically means is that you spend $10,000 to drive $100,000 in revenue. And the same thing here, you spend $10,000 to drive $30,000 in revenue. Now, what this means is your total revenue here is $130,000 and your total spend is $20,000. So we have total spend and we have total revenue in example one. So our total ROAS is literally just going to be the same formula, revenue divided by spend. So we have a 6.5 return on ad spend. Here's what people are expecting. They're expecting this to move from 20 to 30. They're expecting their return on ad spend to stay exactly the same and therefore, we're expecting $195,000 in revenue. Very simple example is you're expecting to spend 10 and make an extra 65. This isn't even a factor of scale. This is a factor of who you're specifically targeting. Are you targeting an existing customer or are you targeting a new customer? This is a false expectation. What's actually going to happen is when you invest more money, the majority of that cash is going to go into the non-branded side of your campaign or your account. That's because when you just give Google more cash, it's not going to suddenly create new people who are interested in your business. It's going to find people who are specifically interested in buying your product today. Therefore, they're going to be net new for your business in most cases. Don't get me wrong. Over time, as you continue to build your brand, as you continue to grow, especially on other marketing channels, you are going to see a slight incremental impact in your branded search. However, we're really focused on non-branded search because we're looking at the immediate impact today. Here's what actually happens. You're going to move from $20,000 to $30,000. So your branded search is going to stay exactly the same. So this is example number one. This is example number two. Your branded search is going to spend $10,000 and you're going to drive $100,000 in revenue. Your non-branded search, you're going to double your spend. You're going to add $10,000 to your cost. And at the best case scenario, your return on ad spend is going to stay the same. Now, what does this mean? 20000 times the three return on ad spend means you're going to drive $60,000. You're going to spend the $10,000 plus the $20,000. You are going to make the $100,000 from branded search plus the $60,000 from non-brand, and that's going to drive you $160,000. Then if we properly divide and add this up, our return on ad spend is now 5.33. You may see this and go, oh my gosh, my return on ad spend is dropping so drastically. But it's not really true because your branded search is just boosting up what's actually scalable. This creates massive conflicts in ad accounts. What we want to do is we want to break down each campaign to have a specific purpose. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to set up within one of your campaigns, you're going to have a brand exclusion. You're just going to want to have a few campaigns to solve this. This is the new customer structure that I recommend for just about everyone. So you're going to have a performance max campaign and that performance max campaign is going to have a brand exclusion. Now, the way you set up a brand exclusion is by going into the settings of your performance max campaign. Once you get down to the bottom, you click additional settings and you click brand exclusion. So you see in this case, we have no brand exclusions, but all you need to do is create and enter your website right into here. And it's going to literally exclude everything that's applicable to your brand so that this campaign is purely focused on driving new customer acquisition. The second piece is a standard shopping. This standard shopping campaign is allowed to do whatever it wants. Basically, this campaign is going to protect your existing terms so that your competitors can't eat up your shopping feed. And you're going to understand that the performance max campaign is going to return probably somewhere around the tune of 50% worse than the standard shopping campaign because that standard shopping campaign is going to be brand inflated. And then finally, you're going to have a branded search campaign, which is going to be 99% branded terms and should return the highest in your entire 
entire ad account. You can add to this structure. This is not the end all be all. And if you want the exact strategies and exact structure you should use based on how much you're spending, go watch the exact video on how I spent over $19 million on Google ads. Or if you just want someone to apply these strategies to your business, go to the moonlighters.com to apply to see if we're fit to work together. And that is a wrap. I hope you all got value out of this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, I try to answer all of our comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.